Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, Italian mode today. I've got uh, three Italian wines and I've got one that is made by someone who lives in Italy uh, but is originally from... Oh, well, I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to wait for the last wine of the quartet to find out. Uh, I'll dig into the Italians first. I have got a Valpolicella from Guerrieri Risardi. Uh, they're 2010 Val... Valpoliburpo. Valpolicello Classico. Let's give it a try. Now, it's got the classic Valpol grapes in here, so um, Corvina, Molinara, Rondinella. It's also got a bit of Merlot in there. Um, and I stick my nose in, one of the things I smell is this, like, this burnt toffee character, uh, but also that little bit of reduction, that character that you get when you make wines in the absence of uh, oxygen, uh, that comes through as just ever so slightly rubbery. It smells, um, well, I think if I, I want Valle Policello to be refreshing. It smells like it's going to be maybe a little bit too uh, jammy for that. I, I question the use of Merlot in Valle Policello, but anyway, let's try it. I don't want to uh, uh, prejudice myself before I put it in my gob. Well, I don't know whether someone's um, aged some part of that in wood. There's, um, there's like a smoky vanilla sheen in there. Um, uh, but I would say it was just almost a bit too ripe. It's lost the it, it's lost the, the the vibrancy and refreshing refreshing character that I want in good Val Policella. Um, it's got this slightly burnt, baked, jammy character. Um, it's quite full bodied. It's okay, uh, but um, I I I don't know whether I, that's what I would have done if I'd been given those grapes. Hey. Ah, well. Uh, next two, just labelled Toscana, and um, if you look helpfully on the back label on one of them, and help, helpfully on the press release that came with the other one, uh, you'll see, well, the, I'll, I'll just tell you about them as we go along. First one is, uh, it just says Colazzi on the front, Tenuta e Colazzi, uh, and so this is basically a Bordeaux blend, Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot and Cabernet Franc uh, from uh, somewhere near Florence. Uh, give it a whirl, 2009 vintage. Well, it smells fresh, um, it smells like the fruit is ripe, ripe black currants, ripe berries, cherries, uh, but it's not gone on to the over-ripeness side. Uh, also, what's good about it is they've not, uh, they've not been over the heavy-handed with oak or anything like that. Um, if there's something I maybe would say against it, I would struggle to say it was Italian. It has certainly got a freshness about it, which makes me think it comes from, it's come from somewhere that's not too warm. But um, yes, I, I would like almost a little bit more Italianity. Okay, um, the good bits. Uh, nice, this nice, generous fruit, plummy, um, juicy, round raspberry. Against it, um, it feels like it's been made for. Uh, sorry, Americans. It feels like it's been made for an American palate. Feels like uh, the maceration. Uh, I could, I could done with it being a bit longer because um, the, the, they, they've got the fruit flavours out. I would like a little bit more structure there. Oak aging wise as well. Uh, there's this uh, sweet vanilla edge. Uh, as if somebody has thought we want uh, we want to get some vanilla f flavor from oak in the wine um, rather than uh, using a um, I, I don't know whether they've used American oak here but they've used uh, they've used some sort of um, treatment I think that's given it, oak treatment that's given it this um, yeah just that slightly um, camp coffee coca-cola like vanilla sheen um, and uh, I it's uh, more maceration uh, longer time in older oak but I'm a old-fashioned old pedantic Hector when it comes to wines like that. Uh, I can't fault the flavours, there are lots of people who love it, but um, uh, I certainly prefer it to the one before, but um, I think that was a better wine to be made with this fruit. Next one, um, it's uh, again to label Toscana, this is Sasso Al Poggio 2007 from Piccini, um, and this has got uh, Sangiovese in, so 60% Sangiovese, uh, and then 20% each, oh, got a bit, a bit too much in that glass, 20% each of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. Give it a try, give it a whirl. It's a bit more old-fashioned, uh, traditional Tuscan, this. Um, it's got what are some, uh, some of that Coca-Cola edge I get in Sangiovese. Uh, when I say, it's funny, when I, when I say co cola, I mean the cola flavours rather than that sweet vanilla cola that I was getting in the one before. Does that make sense? Just to me. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it feels like soft and mature berries. It, it feels like um, they've... Um, uh, maybe not picked it quite as ripe as the one before, uh, but they've given it that time in oak during which times it's softened. Uh, but it's been left with uh, with with quite a quite a nice backbone of acidity. Can you smell acidity? I don't know. Sometimes I think I can. And that's more what I want from Tuscany: warm cherries, that sour cherry edge, licorice. Um, it's um, 
it's not a subtle wine, but um, I do like it for its, uh, its rich, hearty, honest flavours. Um, it's Chianti for Shiraz lovers, if you want to call it that. It's got, uh, it's got that, some of that herby, herby cola-like uh, bit of Sangiovese uh, with a little bit more cojones. Mmm, like it. And the way in which they've softened it uh, here is they, they have done more extraction than on the one before. But they've left it in oak for longer and they're selling it later. So um, it works well. Um, final one, yes, um, the, so the, this guy who's made it is based in Italy, or the guy who's behind it, but he's from Armenia. Uh, so I, I think this is the first Armenian wine I've ever tried. Uh, Armenia, you all know where Armenia it is? Well, if you imagine, it's a landlocked country, and I think the four bits are, are all side bits, I think there's Turkey, Georgia, uh, is it Uzbekistan, and Iran, it's where Mount Ararat is. Uh, and uh, so this is the Zora Karasi. 2010, made from the, well, I think, I think this is the great, Arani Noir, and it's 2010 vintage, and um, I, I think it's a new project, the people planted the vineyards around 2004, 2005, and uh, I think this is pretty much the first wine they've done. Well, one of, the, one of the first things I'd say about the smell is uh, it's got what I call the natural wine smell, uh, slightly uh, clay-like. Um, and maybe something that I call, I, I, I call to my, I say to myself, fizzy. Um, it smells like wines that are being made in the Loire Valley at the moment, um, it, with, with very low sulphur. Same in Beaujolais, um, and same in quite a few other parts of Europe, but maybe those two are the, uh, are the prime movers. Um, and I think it says on the back, aged in um, Amphora. Karasi uh, being the Armenian translation for from Amphora. So uh, aged in these big... Um, fermented is it or aged in, in these big clay things um, and um, so no wood there um, uh, and it smells like it's going to be fresh clean uh, maybe if I have a problem with it it's um, maybe to do with this whole natural wine thing uh, that um, people say natural wine making you don't do anything and as a result uh, it lets the fruit shine through but I would say that uh, there are some natural wines uh, in which the imprint of the wine making is just as strong uh, uh, as in those wines where people are picking their fruit too ripe and putting it in too much oak uh, they uh, they all start to taste the same uh, is that heresy I'll taste it and find out it's pretty tasty um, but as I say, it's got a lot of these flavours that you get in um, a, a lot of other natural wines. It feels like a um, um, yes, it's got it's got that, that it's got a freshness to it. It's got uh, the fruit is 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 ripe but not overripe. I don't I don't know anything about this grape Arani Noir, um, but um, it, it it's uh, just from that it, it smells. Um, it smells like it's got quite a lot in common with uh, more the French grapes and the, the Central European grapes. It hasn't got that. Um, earthy, funky, uh, slightly too meatiness uh, that, uh, that some of those things like Rafosco have got. Um, and uh, here, uh, yes, I mean, if I were to compare it with other grapes, maybe there would be a bit of Cabernet Franc in there, but maybe there'd be something like Cabernet Franc meets more Verdra almost. Um, uh, I do like it, but as I said, uh, in terms of it expressing its terroir, I think it expresses quite a lot about the way in which it's been made, uh, and uh, which isn't the point about natural wine, I thought. But hey, uh, but I, I like it. Maybe overpriced, twenty-three quid. Um, there, it, it feels like a good solid uh, plate of those lovely Italian sausages that are filled with fennel um, and uh, some uh, quite a bit of polenta. I'd love it with that. Um, but uh, so continuing the Italian theme but um, favourite of the four and um, I, I think I actually probably won't one two three four or oh, four three two one uh, but um, interesting set of four wines um, I, that is the one I'm, I'm going to be drinking tonight so maybe I might go out and see if I can find some of those fennelly sausages see you soon